everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I think it's April 23rd, 2024. <clears throat> today we're going to be doing some, what should I call it? Clean up. Um, reduce your stash. Origami Plus because some things are origami, some things use glue. So technically that's not origami, but um, it's basically folding, tearing, cleaning up my digital sheets that I have far too many of. But first, the usual thank yous and appreciation to Carol, Bet, Julie, Ransom, Petra, Joanne, Betsy, Vicki, and Challen. Thank you for your kind reviews. Thank you for your purchases. Thank you for your comments. Um, Suzanne, I, I wanted to mention that. I know you had two comments on videos. When I tried to comment on the first one, it wasn't there. But I, I did see it. Um, thank you. I'm very glad you liked the series of 12 by 12s. I appreciate it very much. And I wanted to show you this in particular regarding that. If you're storing these, you can store them in baggies, various sizes, or just put them in a box if you desire, but they pretty much fit in one size Ziploc or another. So, okay, that's housekeeping. Um, I've been making these envelopes. I've done a lot of these just at my desk upstairs because I also have a um, stack of papers upstairs at my desk. And the reason for this is we all have them. <laughs> stacks upon stacks of digitals. Look how thick my, this particular one is. And it just, when it gets to the point where I have this many and they can barely fit in a clip, it's time to do something with an entire sheet. So that's what we're going to be doing today, making different um, folds and things for ephemera. There's a little corner bookmark. There's a Hanny Trump bookmark. But this week's um, this week's product is on Shopify, Pansies, Paper Collection, and I accidentally um, had it in the stack when I cut off my edges of paper, and that's. Um, that's daisies from last week. So, um, this is on Shopify only. This is on Etsy. So what you'll need are some digitals with the edges cut off. I have a bunch here. I either had more than one well, that one accidentally didn't get cut off. Or um, sometimes they were color correction, etc. So you'll need that. If you want a trimmer, it's up to you. Scissors, up to you glue. 
I do use glue on some of them. So that's all you'll need. And then I'm going to show you how to fold these and make these envelopes first. And I'm just going to be folding. So I have my digital. I'm going to get a square. Best I can. The hardest part is the corner. Okay, I'm going to get a square. I do have my trimmer here in case I have to um, uh, trim an edge. So I'm going to tear this off. It's not exactly straight. Which I'll be doing some trimming, but that's okay. I did half of these up at my desk, and I'll tell you why in a minute. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to trim that off a little. Let me get this perpendicular. Well, I guess I'm going to be using my scissors. Okay, so now we have a triangle. And we have a strip. You're going to fold that in the center. And then you're going to fold this up toward the center, kind of like an airplane fold. So if you're making like a paper airplane. Do the same to the other side. Get that top even. See that top? Get that even. Get it down to a point. Okay, now you're left with this. You're going to fold this up to about there. What's that? About two thirds. Then you're going to fold across the middle, like so. Get these folds nice and burnished. And then you're going to fold this side into there. Like that. Fold this side into there. Like that. See what you're left. Then you're going to fold this down. I use that line as my guide. Everything's nice and square. I really find these envelopes, I have a much easier time making them square for some reason. 
Wait a minute. Let me check that. I want to make sure that's going to fold in at the end. Okay. It's folding in. But I'm just going to leave it out for a second. Then this you're going to unfold. Your middle fold, you're just going to pinch it in. Like so. See that? You're just going to pinch that middle fold in. That's why it helps to get it nice and burnished. Unfold. Take it apart. Push that middle fold in. Okay, so I'm going to, in the origami one I saw, they did not glue that, but I glue it. So I'm either going to get a glue stick or a little liquid glue. Upstairs I just used a cheapy kid glue stick. up to you for the sake of time I'm just going to use a glue stick and then there's a seam there so try to get that point on the seam I'm going to bring it up there and show you get that point on the seam Then you're going to fold this down. And since you already have a center fold, make sure the edges are nice and aligned. Put that point to your center fold. And there you go. There's your little purse type envelope. Okay, you want to do another one? I'll do another one. <clears throat> okay. Get a square. I'm going to fold this toward me. That way I can Get it a little better. Get a square. I pull that up so I can tear it easily. Hold that a couple times. Depends on the paper. Here. Okay, that's the strongest paper, <laughs> and I can tell it's only 20 pound. Why aren't you tearing? There, another strip. Now that's a lot more manageable than a whole sheet of paper. I'm just going to square up my square a little bit better. Okay, have my square. 
have a center fold. Go in like an airplane. Or a bouquet wrapper. <laughs> Line those up. about two-thirds. I mean you can theoretically you can go any length you want but if you want all your envelopes to be uniform I just remember a space. Fold that into your triangle It nice and burnished. Nice and square. There you go. Fold that down. Bring these in. Bring that middle fold, unfold, push the middle fold in. And there you go. Put a little bit of glue. Now I'm probably, I might make some out of book pages just so I can decorate them or do something with them for the photo. Hold that down. Meet your point. Line up your sides. Burnish. Now that's a nice, nice square envelope. And they're pretty much the same size, a little bit different this one is but once you get going it's not too hard to make them uniform and I can use these um, I can use these in a million different ways um, put money in the collection Tuck them in a junk journal, store things in them, um, keep ephemera, all kinds of things. So hopefully you got that. So then you're left with two strips. And when I got enough strips, I made a little notebook. Or you can, I'll show you some other things you can do with strips. So let's move on to probably this one. <clears throat> this one also needs a square. And this is a corner bookmark. And I'm unfolding it so I can remember how to do it. Okay. Get another square. Without an edge, preferably. OK. 
Okay, and I'm just going to make this a large size so you can see it. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to tear one of these in half and make a smaller square. That way you'll have two halves ready to go. So you know what happened. I almost burnt my house down. April 14th, I was down here and my husband came down to say goodbye because he was heading out. So we have two halves. We need a square. My husband came down to say goodbye because he was going out and he said, Do you smell plastic? Well, in here I didn't. But when I went out into the other room, I did. burning plastic so we thought it was the dehumidifier turned it off and then he left and then I was kind of freaking out because the odor wasn't really dissipating so I turned everything off went around Okay, we have our square. It's folded in the middle. We're going to fold it up to the other. That's not exactly square. Wait a minute. Fold it up to the other. Like so. So we have two. And then fold this down. Right? Yeah, fold that down. Fold these up. To meet that. Like so. Okay. Then fold these back down. To make another triangle. This one isn't exactly nice and straight. Okay, like that. And then those are going to get tucked in. Now I'm sure if you were ever a kid you made these. So there's your little corner bookmark. And these are nice because they really hug the page, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, that's number two. Um, number three, I need another half. And I need one, preferably with an upside down. So I'll take this. 
Okay, so anyway, could not, could not figure out what it was. I checked all the lights. I was going around feeling the walls for heat, feeling the outlets, checking everything I could think of. The light, I, at first I did think it was the light because I turned the light on and I heard like a poof. But the light didn't burn out. The light was still on. So I didn't think it was the light. Okay, well, fast forward to Friday. And my husband came down and he smelled it again. So then he did start investigating the lights. And it was a light. It was a ceiling light fluorescent light that we just got last summer in the bulb and it was burnt the cord was burnt the glass actually broke and I don't know if he if he mentioned the light was still on so he brought it upstairs and showed me and I about had a heart attack um, we just bought those light bulbs, so to speak, fluorescent. I think they're fluorescent. Yeah, they're not LED. Last summer. They're brand new. And they almost burnt my house down. So I was afraid to come down here and turn on any light until he checked every light to make sure the light in here isn't the same. So, okay, we're going to do these ones. And you want the top at the bottom. And then you want to fold Fold those in to, until they meet, like so. So he came down and the light in here isn't one of that type. It's a little older, I believe. So now I have, we are, I, I said I cannot I cannot trust those fixtures. It took enough time for us just to find the bulb um, We're replacing all the fixtures Which some of them we have the room next to me has a new fixture So it was, it was scary, and the smoke detector didn't go off. So I don't quite know why the smoke detector didn't go off, it, although it was, even though by the time he found it, it was burning, not flaming, but it was melting the plastic and turning it brown, and the wires. Um, the smoke detector didn't go off. So when you fold that down, that looks right. And then when you fold that up, that looks right. Okay. And since there's your front, you really don't have to worry about it. The only thing I should have done is hold that a little lower, like so. Okay, that's pretty simple. And actually, that, that should have been straighter. 
but there we go. The, fold the bottom, turn the paper around, fold the bottom, and then everything. The only one that's not aligned, well in that case it is, well in that case it is too. I think, I think that one's upside down. That one's upside down. Yeah, the back might be upside down. Yeah, it is. Well, no, not in this one. The words are going the right way. But anyway, that's what I did. So then finally, our last one, last two are a Hanny Trump corner. So I'm just going to use this. And once you get going on these, I mean, I use these all the time. use these for closures. So you fold your triangles. You fold that over. You glue that. Put your glue on there. Okay, so that's what you have, and then you're going to cut that out, and you should angle your scissor. This is really thin paper. I'm not really getting under there very well. You should angle your scissors, I mean not your paper. So you can so you can trim slightly under and then you just cut off the sliver. And there's your perfect corner. Okay. And then that's waste. Now with these strips, another corner you can make. If you don't want to do a tablet or any strip. You can make um, photo corners. That's not very neat because I tore the edge. Let me use this one. You can make a photo corner if you don't want to make. You can make photo corners with any strip. And then you just trim that off. Those two will be glued to your paper, of course. Nice too. put anywhere on a page and just um, let me get something 
it looks more like a card. Where did that card go? And then you just put your little whatever in there. So there's a photo corner. Or you can take your strips like I did and make little notebooks. But as I said, these strips are a lot easier to manage when you get to your um, uh, you know, stash, paper stash. So if you're like me, just want to show you these corners. If you are like me and you don't have time to use all your paper and you just keep it just keeps building up there's two there's one two three four five, six, right? Six ways, I think, to use your... Get rid of digitals in a hurry. Get a little... You can glue those in. You can glue that in if you want. But this one is... This one being thicker hooks the page. So that's nice. It, it just stays secure. It's a nice... If you like keeping your pages relatively plain, it's a nice way to have something but not crowd the page. So, they're just nice. And there's your little, that one didn't stick. Did I glue that? I guess I should have used liquid glue on that one. That paper's quite heavy. So there you go. That's your Origami Plus. And um, if you have my paper stash problem, I hope you find that helpful. I don't know what we'll be doing next week, but um, thanks for your time, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.